the views and opinions expressed in this program do not necessarily reflect the W Radio management, its sponsors, or its goat farm. <laughs> this show is hosted by a pair of idiots, and nothing should be taken seriously. Hey, everybody! Uncensored. Raw and personal. We're all gonna get late! It's time for Full Frontal. With Alex Gascard and Jack Barricat. Oh my god! Woo! Oh, here we go. We did it. We made it. We got two episodes of this shit, so we are set for life now. We did it, dude. Welcome back to our second week of Full Frontal. I am Alex Gascarth. I am Jack Baccarat. And today, we're lucky <laughs> enough to have ourselves a live studio audience. Yeah. 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 When, I, when I say that, I mean that we're sitting on our bus in Nuremberg, Germany. Uh, we're, we just played Rock M Park. Rock M Park, right? Rock M Park, yeah. Um, and... Uh, a bunch of amazing bands. It's like a festival site, and uh, basically, do- what what I mean by what I mean by live studio audience is that it's just our crew. Our, it's crew, our crew. Our crew. But is it's here. Like, it's crazy, dude. We do one episode of a radio show, and we can't even step out in the public anymore. No. Somehow they've they've they they know how we they know how we look. You know, they know our faces but through the radio show. We're in Germany, and I'm being paparazzi. Everywhere yeah. I go. By Vinny, just, the merch guy. Not even for the band. Just go, oh, you're the guys from the radio. Yeah. Yeah. That is everywhere. And you guys are great. Really funny. And you talk about things like the dicks and the boobs. And we love it here. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we got going on. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the episode last week. Uh, we hesitated to add a parental advisory um, warning. warning on it. And I guess maybe we should have done that. But, you know, who cares? Um, so, hey, as you guys know... If you tuned in last week, uh, we like to cover some relatively non-news topics. Um, just just things that, that kind of we find on a weekly basis that strike our fancy, right? so to speak. And the first one on this list, and I think you're going to get a kick out of this, is uh, a 28-year-old Japanese man was able to lose nine pounds in two months simply by watching his diet and masturbating three to five times a day. After reading online that one session of sex was equal to running 200 meters, he decided he could lose weight through masturbation since he didn't have a girlfriend. Doctors claim this, and I quote, FAP diet. Doctor said FAP diet. FAP, FAP, FAP. If if my doctor ever said FAP diet, I would find a new doctor. (laughs) No, dude, that's the best doctor. (laughs) My dad does that kind of stuff. Uh, Anyway, the FAP diet is not a good idea since you're using, you're not using, cal- you're not losing calories through physical strength, um, and masturbating too often can negatively affect hormone levels. I have one thing to say about this, Alex. It's- I've been doing this diet for 24 years, and I look fucking great. Yeah, you look great. I look great. How do you think we stay in shape? I look like Paris Hilton and Jennifer Love Hewitt mixed. You know, kind combined. Of. That's like 200 pounds, right? It's like two combined. I don't know. Combined is probably like. A hundred pounds. hundred pounds, yeah. Okay, so I'm like them times two. Yeah, I guess. I mean, what I'm, what I'm wondering about is why this guy wasn't just... He, it specifically says in here that he doesn't have a girlfriend, and I'm curious as to why he wasn't just jacking it that many times all the time. Because I know that when I'm, when I'm lonely, yeah. I'm jacking it constantly. Constantly? Yeah. Five times a day. Always. And I, now, now I'm worried because apparently it negatively affects your hormone levels, which ex- explains why I'm growing boobs. You can literally see my hormone levels like <laughs> leaving my body. <laughs> you sweat hormones. I sweat hormone. It's disgusting. <laughs> um, so yeah, good for that man. I hope he. I hope he continues. Hey, to, God uh, bless you, man. Yeah, you've, you're innovative. You're doing God's work, and you're making things happen for yourself. Um, a woman in Sandy, Oregon, had five hundred dollars worth of sex toys stolen from her car, which she said had been she had been collecting for a bachelorette party. She's uh-huh. one. Of, uh-huh. Yeah. So first of all, first of all, you're lying. We all know you're lying. Five hundred dollars worth of sex toys. Either this woman had like a catch of like hundreds of sex toys, yeah. or this woman was dropping serious money on like the good shit. She probably went to like a five hundred dollars yeah. in sex toys. That's a lot of money. She probably spent. went to a sporting event, signed up for a free <laughs> credit card, and got one of those like two thousand dollar limit. I'll pay it off later. I'll pay it off. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy sex toys with this. I'm going to Sexorama. Screw this. She's one of five victims of sex toy robberies in her neighborhood, or at least that's what she claims. Damn. And so, so here's what I... This is local news, by the way. She lives down the street from here's me. Here's what I want I, I don't know who did it. Here's what I want to know. 
I, I can't. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you seem. You sound suspicious. We seem. Oh man, we weren't even on tour when this happened. Shit. <laughs> there's that. There's that. Shit, I got no excuses. In here. your neighborhood, they call you. They call you Edward Dildo Hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that neighborhood out of Edward Scissorhands where you're just. Oh man. You got dicks taped to your fingers. We could do a Tim Burton porno. We could oh, do that. Be great. What's another one? We um, do? No, but seriously, what neighborhood is having, like, a string of dildo robberies? Yeah. What's going on? You know, I mean, it's probably a lot of, uh, it's probably a bunch of husbands are not making love to their uh, their wives. So their wives going to go and steal all these dildos from this poor woman who just spent all $500 on it. $500 of her hard-earned money on all these. I haven't spent $500 <laughs> on anything since I bought that $500 dildo. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, little bit of distressing news here. Uh, probably maybe some of the saddest stuff we've had to cover on this show so we, far. we got to bring it down for a second. A, uh, a high school senior was denied entry into her prom because her breasts were too big. Moment of silence for uh, my girl. That's not right. That's not right. It's fucked up, dude. Although the strapless dress was specifically designed for a woman with a large chest, the school claimed it still showed too much cleavage, which was against the dress code. Um, The girl was only allowed in once she covered her cleavage with a shawl and only stayed for an hour because she was so humiliated by the whole thing. You know, I had a, I had a similar uh, incident to this when I uh, did go to our prom. I also went to the prom before ours and after. You and should never take Viagra separate. before you go to a prom. You gave me this pill and you said it would give me energy and happiness. And I had, couldn't, in your I had, penis! I had a boner for nine hours. They wouldn't let me in a prom. I got in late. They say, if you have, they say if you have a boner lasting more than four hours, you should seek medical attention. So you, I nine me- hours? I seek medical attention and the guy just said, that's not that beautiful impressive. Dick. I've seen better dicks. It's a beautiful dick. Move on with your life, bro. Get out of here. No, honestly, though, that's, like, fucking weird, man. Hey, no, seriously. The school made her cover her breasts with a shawl. What is this, 1850? <laughs> like, oh, get, hey, welcome. You're, what are you, a hussy? What are you doing here, hussy? Uh, <laughs> you, har- you charlatan you harlot? Give her this red jacket. Step, yeah, put this re- put this red letter on her. She's, that's what I meant. Like, God damn it. This sucks. Um, anyway, I don't. It doesn't say her name or anything like that. I'm sure no, she didn't want her name to get out there. But we're gonna have her own prom, if, and you're invited. And bring all your friends if they're gonna dress similarly, especially if they are as well in, endowed with personalities as you are. Yeah. Um, God bless America. Hey, you know what, man? I, woman, lady, ma'am. I don't know how old you are. I'll come to prom with you. I'll be your prom date. Uh, a company called Lollyfile has invented a new. Oh, this is gross. We should talk about this, though. They've invented... Yeah, you specifically asked to talk I, about I, this. I one. requested this story be on, <laughs> be on our show. A company called Lollyfile has invented a new breast milk-flavored lollipop. Just, I'm going to give you a moment to think on that, audience. Mm. The owner wished to capture the flavor Supple. that was so delicious it would calm down screaming babies. Um, while breast milk was involved in the developing process to identify the flavor, the lollipops are, in fact, vegan and contain no actual breast milk. You know what, dude? The amount of times that we fly and have to hear babies cry on an airplane, I totally, I totally, I'm with this, dude. I'm with the breast, I'm with the breast milk lollipop on this one. I don't know. Yeah. It's a little terrifying. I mean, hold on. Can you at least, you can't, you can't knock it till you've tried it. I guess. It's like jelly, it's like jelly bellies. Yeah. You know how they have all those weird flavors? Like boogers. They have like the gross flavors. They got like boogers. They got, what else they got? Like popcorn. That's kind of gross, right? No, they're, they're, the gross flavors are like. Yeah, dirt, it's like dirt, vomit. They've got baby boogers, boners. baby boner, baby bone. Dude, yeah. you can't say baby boner ever. <laughs> if this is the. I know this is the internet, but you can't say baby boner on the internet. Right. <laughs> That's where we draw the line on full frontal. Baby Sorry. boner is where we stop. <laughs> Fuck. Damn it. Dude. Yeah, you're an asshole. I'm messing up, man. You I'm are, messing up. We made it through one episode. We're not gonna make it through two if you're talking like that. We're gonna get canceled. Um. So speaking of speaking of candies that gross me out. Yeah. Horrendously, uh, I guess another company has just created a a chocolate anus. Right? Yeah, it's uh. So what what, what this guy's doing is he's taking molds of his anus. You know, with uh. <laughs> is it his anus? Yeah, it's his anus. <laughs> yeah. Ew. And he's taking molds of his anus and he's creating. <laughs> boo. boo the chocolate anus! Boo the chocolate uh, anus! Boo this man! He's taking. Are you not entertained? <laughs> he's taking molds of his anus and creating a chocolate that is. Like perfectly molded into, I guess his ass, his butthole. Yeah, his butthole, and like it's just chocolate, so it's not that weird. But his butthole chocolate. It makes me very uncomfortable. 
Speaking of things I don't want to talk about anymore and assholes, Justin Bieber is paying $250,000 to uh, go into space. That's crazy. Yeah. 250000 How does someone like that like uh, come into that kind of money? Well, he's a successful... Someone of his age. He's a successful pop star. He's a, he's a businessman of, type guy? Yeah, he, uh, he created... Like, he does uh, a lot of, like... He, he plays with, like, stock market kind okay, of stuff. Okay. There's a lot of, like, investments. I'm just wondering, most people of his, of his age don't have that kind of money to, to do those kind of things. I know, I know. He's a, he's a phenomenon. I mean, maybe go to Houston, check out NASA, but, I mean, I don't go to the moon, okay. Space camp? Okay, <laughs> space camp, maybe. Dude, here's a question. Bieber's like 12. Did he go to space camp first? Like, yeah. all right, before you get on this fucking He goes ship. to space camp, he just goes, he just goes uh-uh, not good enough. <laughs> no, Ma, I said no. <laughs> Going to the moon, Mom. <laughs> um, all right, <laughs> go to, to Mars. In other news, uh, All Time Low is, is donating $250,000 to have the company leave him in space. Zulu, <laughs> cut. Uh, we're going <laughs> to... We're gonna uh, we're gonna take a short break. We're gonna listen to uh, some guys that were on the festival today playing with us. Uh, it's our good friends in Simple Plan. Yeah! 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 <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is their song, Astronaut. Oh my God! Because the because of the beaver. Because of the beaver. Segway. Enjoy the song. Can anybody hear me? Am I talking to myself? Please come down. Whoa! Oh, yeah! Oh my god. That's the best studio audience reaction we've ever had. Welcome back to Full Frontal. My name is Alex Gaskarth. I am Jack Baccarat. <laughs> You keep referring to yourself as Baccarat today. People will you know? get it wrong, so I'm going to get it wrong for them, Alex. And they'll hopefully reverse it into your real name. Yeah. Um, amazing story that just yeah. unfolded before the break. Uh, we were talking about space, yep. and um, right as we were talking about that, a couple of the dudes, a couple of the dudes from Simple Plan that we threw to w- literally walked on the bus. Yes. So we are now joined by the man with his own radio show. Yes. Hey. Sebastian, what's up? How you we, got, we got Seb here. Yep. And his show is called the Man of the Hour show. Man of the Hour. It airs on Wednesdays um, at 8 p.m. And we were we were having our dressing rooms are like right next to one another today, and so we were like freaking out about the fact that like oh my god, Sebastian's gonna come over here and, and like beat the shit out of us because we now have a competing radio show. And then we were like, no, 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 no it's different days. Partners, we're partners. Yeah, we're exactly. not competing. We're we partners. are partners in crime. So- and uh, so we he stepped on, and we invited these guys to. Uh, to talk with us for a little bit about uh, the next topic that we want to talk about. I don't know if, if you guys tuned in last week, but if you did, uh, we talked about a, a couple different topics, but the first one we talked about was the issue of, of friends with benefits. And uh, you heard a couple different sides of the story. You heard my side, and I'm, I'm a bit more of a, uh, I'm a bit more of like a, a, a loyal spirit. Um, I've had a girlfriend now. You know, I... I George! <laughs> so, uh... Girlfriend number squares! <laughs> Lame. So uh, no. So I my my side of the argument was uh, you know I that's not my that's not my shtick that's not my thing anymore anymore yes sure <laughs> she's listening stuff of course yeah no not at all you're not into that she should be am I. tuned in I'm a good boy um, and so so the other the other I don't know the other side of the uh, the other side of the equation was was Jack's argument which was uh, I'm gonna continue. Uh, fucking and casually dating for the rest of my life, like George Clooney. We were put here on this earth for one reason: to eat, drink, and and to get BJ's. What did I say? We were put on this earth for one reason: to eat and to drink and to fuck. <laughs> we were also we weren't meant to do math. <laughs> we weren't meant to go to school and learn math. I forgot to mention. That yeah, David is also here. If you David notice is a, also weird, a weird French accent from us, it's not us. You know, it's not us. It's weird. not Pierre either. Um, excuse me, weird? No, not don't weird. You mean, don't you mean highly sexual? I mean highly sexual. If, I mean, if ever, if very ever, therapeutic. Throughout, yes, throughout, throughout this episode, if you hear a very highly sexual, beautiful, like uh, calming, calming voice with a with a slight accent. It's not God. It's not God, but it's close. It's the French Canadian God. <laughs> it's Dave and Seb from Simple Plan. <laughs> Um, so, oh shit, your phone locked. I need you to unlock your phone so I can get to this story. No lock, brother. So I took you... off the lock, brother, so you could check my email. Thank mate. you. Speaking, <laughs> what? That's not a that's knife. My, that's, 
That's my French accent. It's not good. Speaking of, uh, so as we we were on the topic of friends with benefits, and I I set it up, and we're talking about, um, we got some emails. We asked you to email in some some opinions, some responses. And the first one that caught my eye came from a girl named Allison. She says, first off, great show. I laughed, I cried, I lost my virginity all over again. Respect. Thank you. That was our intention. But she goes on to say, uh, you two made me fight with my best friend, who for this email we will call Lola. She's using spy names. Lola, how dare you? Double O Lola. Lola, you have left me. She Make goes, we were listening. <laughs> Por qué, Lola? Por qué? Por qué? She was, uh... Why do you do this to me? They were listening together, and apparently they got in a fight over the show, because Lola said she thought that you're pathetic, Jack. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. Why did you say that to me, Lona? So she said, she said that uh, she thought it was pathetic of you, and she got angry. Um, this girl, uh, whose name was, like I said, Allison, she defended you, apparently. Um, but Thanks, girl. On the other side of the coin, basically this girl was upset at you and, and lost respect because she thought that having these shallow relationships wasn't... Um, you know, meaningful, and I guess I, she had placed she had put you on a pedestal. Right, Allison had put where I belong. Or no, not Allison. Lola, double O Lola had put you on a pedestal. Where I belong, and you do belong on a pedestal. Right, it's true. And um, all princesses do. <laughs> she, she, uh, she thinks that it's you're shallow. She thinks you're shallow, and I want you to defend yourself right now. In the next thirty seconds, I want oh you to tell God. Lola, double O Lola. Can you feel me? And help. <laughs> I was just saying that, listen, man, like, if you don't have a girlfriend, you should just be able to do what you want. You know, live your life, experience your body, you know, let others experience your body. And, you know, just kind of experiment with different things that you see on YouTube or you porn. And? I think you're completely awesome for thinking that. Screw that girl. Hey, no autographs right now, bro. (laughs) Oh! No, I learned almost everything I learned, I learned from you. No, but seriously, screw her. Literally. No, actually, actually, screw her. Lola, you should find me. My meal is Jack Barakat at yahoo.aol.com. <laughs> Just no dot. <laughs> no dot. No dot. I, I like this. I feel like we have a, we have a, a couple of, a, a pair of, a pair of sexual deviants on the bus right now in Jack. We and, got my and dad Dave. and uh, David from Simple Plan. D- David, David has acted as almost a, like a Mr. Miyagi for you. He's yeah. guided your, he's guided your penis. He's... Onward. The thing is, like, he's using the excuse of, of guiding you know my that? penis to touch it. Remember that? And I'm quote? like, you don't need to touch it to guide it, man. You can <laughs> guide it with your mind and your, your spirit. <laughs> he goes, no, I'm going to guide it with my hand. Yeah. Remember, uh, remember like, that scene in, in Karate Kid where he's like, Miyagi's like, karate here, not here. Yeah. And he points at the heart and then the head. Yeah. Dave does the same kind of thing, but he walks up to you, he goes, karate here. And he points at your dick. And then, not here. I think I might leave. Don't leave, don't leave. I, I don't, don't think I want to be associated with this show anymore. Don't leave, oh, Sebastian. No, because no, you guys are the pair, and we're the pair, the other pair. Okay, okay. We've, corru- we've corrupted your show yeah. now. We're, we're the good guys. Yeah, they're, they're, the, they're the deviants. We don't do any of this stuff. I've never, I've even, I've never even seen boobs. <laughs> so anyway, I just... I. I read this. I read uh, Allison's email, and it re- it deeply upset me. I got yeah. I got a little bit upset, and because I said, you know, that's my best friend, and he's going to live his life the way he wants to live, you know, and and it's it's not right. for everyone. I think one of the points we have to make on this show is that you know whether you're sexu- more sexually inclined or you're you're more of a uh, I just want to be with this person or whatever. All of those things are cool, and you can't you can't judge any one person for any of those things. Yes. Yeah. So. I got, but I did get this awesome email from uh, from a girl named Bex, Bex B E X. I'm drinking you right now. Bex writes, "I have no idea why I'm telling you guys this. Uh, I was 18 years old at the time. Met this guy. She was on holiday. These romances never end well. Um, she fell in love. She was young. She was just she was just blossoming as a human, getting into her experiences. And uh, she goes, as far as keeping it." You know, holiday romance. She goes in big caps. Mm. That didn't happen. <laughs> um, that spelled with G A T. The holiday part was awesome, like it was seriously fun. The aftermath sucked. <laughs> no, seriously, the whole falling for each other thing happened. And since he's from the USA and I'm from the UK, it was long distance, and I'm shit in relationships. Anyway, that's what <laughs> this is. Quote for quote, I'm just putting. I'm. This is. I imagine that Beck says this. Um, anyway, but she goes. 
Uh, I was all ready to sabotage the relationship, uh, but apparently the guy didn't want to. And then she realized through all of this, she goes, well, you know, this this guy got very clingy, apparently, the, the dude in the U.S., and, and she was ready to move on. She had chalked it up to a loss from the get-go. It was like, God oh, we'll be girl. friends, we'll live in the moment, and then we'll move on. And uh, As God made so us. So this girl says, it basically taught me, to sum it all up, it basically taught me I'm better as a friend with benefits than I am at committing to a relationship. Whether that's down to fear of heartbreak, I don't know. I'm 20 years old, and I'd rather have fun. Jack, call me. That's not in there. But Yo, what is your number? So, so here's Call the, me, babe. 911. The, dial me up. The point is, the point is this. There, the point is this. There are all kinds of people, and so for everyone that views you as a disgrace right. and a pervert, there is an equal amount. There is, the there equal is part that also people that love me for and every yin. What I do. For every yin, there is a yang. Yeah, and she is your yang. Thank you, Bex from the UK, for your story, and thanks for making Jack and Dave feel like they're not horrible human beings. One love, they baby know girl. they're not, and we know they're not. One, One love. love. We're going to take a break. We're, uh, we're going to listen to a band that we've been on tour with for a couple weeks now. Uh, their name is Green Day. I'm sure you've heard of them before. And this song is called... Uh, Welcome to Paradise. Love it. Enjoy. Every day. Hi! We're back. You're listening to Full Frontal on Adobe Radio. We are... Alex Gaskarth and Jack Backrat. Stop referring to yourself as that. It's so stupid. If I say it wrong, they'll say it right. That's how it works. <laughs> I'm not sure that's how it goes. Big shout out to Simple Plan. They've, they've been Yo. lovely to be around. Um... They've been sticking around, trying to figure out how to... Uh, they, they've been getting sexual they're advice They're still here, us. and they're learning. They're learning they're trying about, to figure out how to laugh longer than two body. minutes. I'm like, why the fuck would you come to our bus, then? Seriously, though, massive props to Sebastian. He has a show on Wednesdays at uh, 8 p.m. called Man of the Hour on this very channel. So uh, make sure you listen to that in two days' time. So I guess the next segment we got to talk about is... Uh, last week, we discussed snooping. And is it okay to snoop? Like stalking. If you, yeah, well, I, not stalking. More if you're in a relationship. Right. Is it okay to log into your significant other's Facebook? Is Email. it okay to look through their phone when they're not looking? Kind of, like these sort of fishy, not okay things. And my stance, again, was I was very sketched out about it. I think that a relationship needs trust. It needs love. It needs compassion. Compa it's about the love and it's the passion. About the, not about the shit-stained balls or the pussy. It's not about the alligator fuckhouse. Yeah. So, uh, with the dirty Sanchez. So, uh, I, we got we got a bunch of responses, like a lot. This is probably one of the most responded to segments of the show, and uh, the one I wanted to lead off with because this one's kind of interesting. It, it sort of takes a, it's like a middle of the middle of the field kind of. I don't know what the expression is. Mid ground approach, I guess. Right. Um, this girl, her name is uh, Lauren, and she said, uh, "I was a serious snoop for a little while, but that shit just gives you a stomach ache." Um, when you find something that robs you the wrong way, rubs you the wrong way, it's it's a real bum out. Um, her freshman year of college, she was logged in her boyfriend's account uh, and snooping, only to realize through the wonders of Facebook privacy privacy settings that he was also logged into hers too. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I guess because of that, the snooping has decreased because we've gained more trust and have been doing the long distance thing for a long time now. But also, I found out that he only likes guys. So, so what you what you're telling me is that your complete lack of trust in one another has brought you together even more. Yes. I don't fucking like you. I don't fucking like you either. Let's be. I love you. <laughs> That's amazing. So hey, um, these are two snoopers who no longer snoop because. They were snooping on one another. It's like a, it's like a snoop paradox. Um, okay, this person says, snooping's cool. Uh, her name is Meredith. Meredith, I don't want to say her last name. Okay for snooping. She's talking about the topic. She goes, uh, if you've got a problem with your, your SO, your significant other, talk to them. People forget to use their words, and it's infuriating. Instead of creeping on the computer or phone, yo, are you cheating on me? In quotes. Just be like, to their face, yo, are you cheating on me? Um, in all caps, fucking use your words. That's what she says. Um, I don't think you realize how often I've had my friends asking what they should do about relationship problems when all they needed to do was talk to them. Nice. Well said. Round of applause. Wonderful. 
Give it up for fucking communication. The first. C o m u n i c a t. Communicat. The first. Uh, the first stable human being on our show, maybe. So thank you, Meredith. We appreciate you for that. Now I guess we should probably hear from someone who is the most, maybe the most unstable person on our bus. Yeah. Um, he, it, we didn't even know about this until like halfway through the episode, but uh, he sort of just showed up, showed up on radar, and he was guitar, like, oh, "I guess what you talk about our guitar tech, Danny, Danny Curley." Yeah, and so we're gonna we're gonna pass to him. Um, he's parted his parted his hair to the other side to tell the story. I don't know why, but well, that was like different, Danny. Yeah. I guess it makes him feel better. But here we go. Uh, Danny Curley has a story about snooping. Yeah, so the snooping story. So I was dating this girl for almost about two years. And, uh, like, probably four months before we broke up, like, things kind of got, like, weird. Like, we both, like, worked retail, like, that thing was whatever. But I can't imagine. I I know you can't imagine. I can't imagine. Okay, well, <laughs> I, I can. And uh, so uh, we were doing this thing, blah, 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 blah. And uh, there was this other dude that kind of, like, became, like, friends with everybody, you know? Like, his name was Randy. That's yeah. his, It's always Randy. It's, his name... Randy! No, that's his, bam, bam. his actual name is Randy. And uh, so, like, things kind of got weird, and they kind of got, like, close. But I was like, yo, like, whatever. Like, I've been dating this girl for a long-ass time. Not a big deal. So then, like, things got really weird. So I, I drove... And he started up. making out with her in front of you? That kind of not, stuff. not that weird. Let him finish his story. Not that weird. So I went over to Randy's apartment and kind of like knocked on his on his apartment door and like he came out and was like, oh, like, what the fuck are you doing here? And I like threw him up against the wall and I was like, yo, dude. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. Danny. Yeah. See these muscles? You, it's well, like WWE you, you over You can't here. see these muscles because of radio. But I was like, Damn. yo. I was like, I don't know what's going on with you and my girl, but just like let me figure it out before like you do your He's thing. He's like, I can't understand you because I'm up against the wall and all my stuff's like kind of swish ki- squish together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, swish together is what Jack just said for everyone listening. Swish together. So he was like, yeah, man, like that's totally cool. Like I respect you. I respect everything. And I was like, yeah, like, all right, dude, cool. So things got worse and worse and worse and worse. And so finally like me and my girl like broke up. And I happen to know her Respect. MySpace, you know, address and whatever email. Password? What was her email? I'm, I'm not going to. Vinny asked what was the no. email. More importantly, what was her password? Because you can really tell a lot about a person by their passwords to things. Something, 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 69. Oh, oh. see? You fucked up! Early girl server Roxy, Roxy Star 87. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So, like, I hacked into her email. Like, this was literally three hours. You can't hour- say hack if you know the password. Continue. I Something him. logged into her MySpace. Literally, this was three hours after he broke up. And she, like, had sent, like, a message to Randy. And she was like, hey, like, me and Danny are broke up. Like, it's your move. And I was just like, motherfucker. Wait, so you hadn't broken up with her yet. And no, no. she was. We had broken up for three hours. Oh. And, like, that was the Ooh. message. Like, you were so over me. Like, what just dumb me. Like She's trying to get right back into it, you know? I don't Damn. Uh, I, I guess if and you... that's my story. Fuck. Damn. Real talk, though. How did you get my, how did you get my sister's password? Oh. <laughs> Bear cat. Damn it, man. Oh. Come on, Jeez. man. She's that, an innocent that's, bystander, that's man. That's pretty brutal. So, I guess in this situation, it was... I get, because she broke up with you, and you, had, you were snooping post-breakup. Yeah, like three hours. Like I knew something was up. Like, but she. Right, but I'm saying you weren't being the shit bag no. ahead of time. Like I, you weren't like, oh, I'm gonna spam you. No, like I knew things were shitty, and I was like, okay, like whatever, like what's going on? Yo, real talk. And yes, just a throwback, Vinny. That does make Vinny a shit bag. Yo, he doesn't have- Alex, I want you to do me a big favor on this show today. Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Yo, real talk, Danny. Though, was this fourth grade or fifth grade? Uh, this was 11th grade. All right, 11th right, grade, right, okay. Well, you know, I All right. Was, Jack, I haven't been on tour for the last 35 All years, right. so. Well, you know, I was, I was swinging on this week, Sad, and I, I met this girl named Janie, uh, and she had a lot of nice things to say about my grades. She said, oh, yeah, you're going to do really well. You might even be the president one day. You almost, you got a thumbs up on two tests. You got three gold stars, so I might date you one day. And Danny said, well, okay, that sounds good. I'll see you on the MySpaces when the Internet happens. And this is why I'm single. And that's all. (laughs) 
And there it is. So uh, there you have it. There you have it. Uh, it's a sad story. Also, you know, but he's he's a stronger. We'll be taking up pity donations later. <laughs> He's a stronger, better man because Donate of it. Donate boob pics and uh, money to at Danny Curley Twitter. on Twitter. Yeah. I don't know how I don't know how Twitter can receive money just via an at sign. No, there's a way. I think so. It's there's science. It's internet science. All right. Uh, we have to take a break now. Um, what do you want to listen to? Should we listen to Aesop Rocky? Every, yeah, we should listen to Aesop I wanted, Rocky. I wanted to start this. Last week, we, we threw to a song. We like It was all pop punk, and then randomly it was... Uh, we did a Daft Punk song, yeah. and so I want to do like a wild card song of the week. Let's do it. And so this week's wild card song of the week is that Aesop Rocky jam. I like fucking bad bitches, is my fucking problem. That one. Enjoy! You're listening to Full Frontal on <laughs> IW Radio. So anyway, I guess the next topic we have to uh, talk about, based on last week's episode, um, is about sexting. We asked for questions. We asked for stories. You wanted to hear about... I don't know why you wanted to hear about this. It's I my own just personal your, kind of, uh, you know, thing. It's your taste. It's my taste. It's your flavor. Yeah. It's what I go for. You walk into a Cold Stone Creamery, you want what you want. If I want to... When I die, I want to be known for sexting. Continue, oh, Alex. Okay, beautiful. Well, we have, we have a story here from a girl named Jillian... Um, and she says that she is not too fond of sexting herself because you never really know who's going to see it. For example, one time I was texting a friend of mine and received a message from her that was very clearly meant for her boyfriend and not mm. for me. Mm-hmm. After I told her to double check who she was texting before sending, I got a revised and more descriptive version of her message to him that was probably the most graphic thing I've ever read. Wow. God bless you. So basically... This girl's friend, Vinny is currently sexting, by the way. This, this girl, this girl is uh, unsus- un- unwittingly the victim of erroneous text message sexting. Is there such thing as being sexually abused via text? Yes, apparently in this case, yes. This case? Although that's that's kind of the thing. It's like you can't ever translate that. You can't make that like sexual harassment. In the, you know, you hear all these things about sexual harassment in the yeah. workplace, and it's like there's no way that outside of texting you could be like, "Oh, sorry, I accidentally grabbed your boob," because it's like you can <laughs> I ac- accidentally shove my fingers in your. Yeah, you can accidentally text someone something really inappropriate, like, "Oh shit, your contact popped up. I meant to send it to Randy, but yeah. instead it went to Randall." The amount of people that I've accidentally Snapchatted is unbelievable. The list goes on. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine if you, if that was an argument like in the office place? Like, um, yeah, Janine, uh, I know that you've gone to, to human relations about uh, the things I've said to you, but I was just yelling that across the hall rather than at you. When I said you have really nice cankles, I meant to say it to Dorothy in cubicle five, right. who is down there? You just happen to be walking by. The the problem with Snapchat is there's so many names close to each other, and I accidentally send some weird pictures to weird people. Of course you do. Let's just say that I'm no longer invited to family reunions. I- <laughs> Damn! I it. can't even show face. Nice. And I can't show other parts. They've seen it all. <laughs> They've already seen it all. I can't show anything. Face faces faces the least of their worries. Yes. Um. They. It, it's almost Snapchat. By the way. Just to talk about Snapchat God, for a second. God no. has given us a great gift. God, just leave it at that. This same girl more recently says, I was sexting an ex of mine who was also an ex of my friend, and I was ac- I accidentally sent a sex to her. That was fun to explain. Wow. Yeah. So That's that's messing up. Either you're either you're professional about the way you sext or don't sext. Because I think I think at the end of the day, you're setting yourself up for problems because going back to this uh, Snapchat thing, yeah, I've used it a couple times, and I made I made. Alex, mis- you are the Bill Gates of Snapchat. <laughs> I invented it. No, I, I made myself. I, I broke the first rule of Snapchat, <laughs> which is first rule of Snapchat, which is, is don't talk about Snapchat. Right. And I tweeted my my username. Yeah, being I was like, like oh this fu- oh this will be fun. This will be innocent. And instead, I got a slew of. People uh, videotaping their cats doing like different things. Borderline bestiality noise. 
Not really. It wasn't so much anyone fucking cats, because cats are not. not good lovers. No. But it was more just, like, awkward for me, because the couple the couple boob pictures that I got God bless you. were, like... It was like people that shouldn't be sending boob pictures where they were. Like it was like, oh look at me! I'm working at Burger King and I'm by the fry section and I'm just gonna pop a nipple out of my Burger King shirt. Well now, oh I love your band and I was like, why are you sending I'm, this? Now I'm just fucking hungry. <laughs> I could. Here's what I wish. Here's so what you I just wish. had to go down the fry. The I fry wish. Alley. I wish that we could invent instead of Snapchat, we could invent Snap Smell. <laughs> where you just oh my where you God. just get where out of nowhere you just get an, an anonymous scent. <laughs> How no, gross would that be? Ninety nine percent farts and one percent you <laughs> yeah. don't want to know. The one percent is what the fuck is that? Everything up till this point has Damn been it. farts. Damn it, Uncle Tony! What the fuck was that? <laughs> You're from Milwaukee. You now. smell fucking crazy, man. Oh my god. I don't have an Uncle Tony, but if I did he would So he Jack would smell weird. I heard <laughs> we've gotten way off topic. I heard you had a sexting story. Uh you know, I got an email from this girl Allie, yeah. uh Allie C. I'm mm. not gonna say the last name. Don't ever. But she actually wasn't sexting, she was having phone sex like it's fucking nineteen eighty five. It's the hip, it's the <laughs> It's the hipster, the hipster I sexting. You know, I wasn't born in the era of phone sex, but I assume it's something that people used to have. <laughs> did, was there? Hang on, was there ever an age where, like, in the in the early nineties, did people sex each other via pager? Yeah. Like, be, yeah. Oh, like if I send you three stars and a five, that means I'm touching myself. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. So basically, this girl was having phone sex with her boyfriend upstairs in her bedroom, and uh, after the phone sex, she nonchalantly walked downstairs to get some food because. After phone sex, most people get hungry, I guess. Totally. I don't know. I've never had it because, once again, it's 2013. Anyways. No um, one does that anymore. So Grow she up. went downstairs to get food from her kitchen, and her mom said, you should probably shut your window. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then she said, uh, me and the neighbor have heard everything. No! Yeah. And now this girl cannot even look her neighbor in the face <laughs> anymore, dude. More importantly... What was this girl's mom doing outside in the garden at night with the neighbor? Mm. Ooh. I'd like to pose a question. A question a for my lady Ali. Yeah, exactly. It's like, okay, maybe you are masturbating in your room. At least you're in your room. Hey, Ali, have him marry your real dad. It's your neighbor. <laughs> If you ever wondered why you had blue eyes and not brown, it's because the guy down the street is named Blue-Eyed Charlie, and he <laughs> he likes to talk to your mom at the middle of the night. How do those tomatoes look? They look pretty green to me. Let him uh, let him see some more no, sun. No, no, you know? honey, we have a we have a cabbage patch together. It's just a mutual understanding, and we we make we put our garbage. The rest of the neighborhood doesn't get it, but we make we make compost together. We have bins full of compost. Ellie, more importantly, We're the, doing the, the deeper part thing. of the story is your mom may be hooking up with your neighbor. <laughs> sometimes, so maybe rebuttal with that. The, the, end of the, the, the moral of the story is sometimes dads are not your dad. We got to take a break. <laughs> we'll be back after these messages. You're listening to Full Frontal. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Um, I, want you to go, I want you to listen to Alkaline Trio right now. This song's called Stupid Kid. Love it. Hey. Hi. What's up, guys? Uh, hey, you're listening to Full Frontal. We're still here. We haven't gotten canceled yet. We haven't left. We have not left. Uh, that was Alkaline Trio with Stupid Kid. One of my favorite songs ever. Great I just song, saw them at man. Ram's Head Live in Baltimore while we were home before this tour. Good old Baltimore, dude. Representing the pop punk. Lovely. Uh, the Ravens were just awarded their, uh, their Super Bowl rings. And they got to meet the president, which is something that you know I yeah. would love to do. Yeah. Um, cool. If you're listening, Mr. Barack yeah, Obama. Moment. Obama definitely tunes in. He definitely tunes in. I'd just like you to know, if there's one show that Obama is taking time out of his busy schedule to listen to, it's this one. It's Full, Full frontal. frontal. I would just like to make a statement that I love this show. Um, <laughs> and that's, that's a direct quote, uh, spoken as he would speak it. Um, so we had some really popular segments last week. We've gone through a few of them, but uh, we had a moment in music, which we have not yet covered. Right. And uh, this week... There's a couple 10th anniversary things happening, so I figured we'd talk about those. Um, we got the 10th anniversary of uh, Yellow Card's breakthrough album, debut album, Ocean Avenue. Yeah. Great. Great album. Them. They're a beautiful man. 
Yeah. They're gonna do a. They're gonna do like an acoustic rendition on Hopeless Records. They're releasing in August thirteenth. Yeah, they've uh, they've partnered with our label, which has been really cool. Um, it's been nice being label mates with some of our now best friends, but before that, just just a band Heroes. that we looked up to. Yeah, and uh, so they're they've re-recorded the entire album front to back, completely acoustic. Um, like you said, it's coming out August thirteenth, and uh, they're they're gonna do, do like an international tour to kind of you know promote the album. Yeah, sounds great. So uh, check that out, please. And in the same same kind of uh, same kind of vein, Taking Back Sunday, another band that we grew up listening to, is also celebrating their 10th anniversary um, of the album Tell All Your Friends with a live acoustic version, which was recorded during their 10th anniversary tour last year. Where um, they're going to be playing shows at Starlin Ballroom and uh, a couple other places. They're they're recording those uh, just just as a. Just as a little reference, um, I believe Starlin Ballroom is just opening back up. It is, yeah. Yeah, after being completely submerged underwater. Uh, Which is somewhere that we've kind of made like a northeast kind of venue. That we're like our yeah, we've played there many times. times yeah. and it's, it's, it was, when, I, when I heard that it got completely destroyed by the hurricane, uh, it was, you know, it, it sucks. It, it sucks when anything like that happens. It's really, it's heartbreaking and, you know, people have spent time building a legacy there. And uh, it, it we it's crazy. It. We it's crazy to know yeah. that like it can be anything at, at any time can be wiped out just like that. And so they've they've done a good job of within like a year and a half, two years, they've come back, they've bounced back, and and they have a band from the area, sort of relative area, hometown heroes um, taking back Sunday. I mean, playing from, one of the first shows back. They're not from Jersey, but they're from New York, right? But it's it's that kind of area, and and uh, it's it's beautiful that they're they're back on their feet and they're hosting a ten year anniversary. It's it's a good look for everyone, and I'm stoked on it. I'm, I hope we get to play Starland again. Uh, shout out to Starland. Shout out to that whole area. One love. We New love Jersey, you very much. Thanks for having us. Hey-o. Hey-o. A good friend of ours, Vinny Vegas, has just stepped on the tour bus. He's looking good. He's looking tight, and he's looking very masculine. He's so, he's so very handsome. He's so tight like he's a so tiger. Very, so very handsome. He's taking a shot of Jack right now and chasing it with a... Beck's beer. But you know what? I feel like it's on the spot with Vinny Vegas time. Yeah, I agree. We just did a moment of music. We should do yeah. on the spot. With Vincent Petzl. These were our best moments last week. We're closing out with him this week. Vinny, what do you have to talk about this week? Uh, well, I, I just want to say thank you to All Time Love for having me on the spot. And this is one of the, I guess, favorite segments I saw, you know, for the ratings. Uh, I just want to thank the engineer. Fuck off. Ryan Dawson, I see him. He's back there behind the computer. Uh, there's a note in front of this. It says, "Vinny, talk about the time he lost your virginity." That's <laughs> there's no note. Okay, they said talk about it. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so uh, it's it's weird. Uh, I was 18 years old, and uh, in high school, senior year, I won in uh, my superlatives class flirt. So people probably thought they were like, "Hey, he's there's the easy A. He's having sex." But no, it's not true. I waited till I was 18. I was in community college. And do I say her name? No. Okay. Her uh, name was Dave. She was this little cute Italian girl. 007. Yeah, and what's the biggest bummer was I didn't obviously know what I was doing, but she was more experienced. She was one of those girls that had four partners before me. <laughs> wait, 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 Vinny, 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 you didn't lose your virginity. She fucking took it, dude. She took your virginity. Oh, okay. So, yeah, she took, I, yeah, she took my virginity. I was 18. Uh, I was. It was in my. It was in my parents' house. On I slept on a futon for a while, which is a weird time for me. And I. Uh, I kept my shirt on. <laughs> and and and. I, New York does have a lot of bed lice. And I was. Uh, I was still into wearing like tube socks. It was before like ankle socks were like a thing for me. God, what were you? What were you? You were like a mutant. I was so so shy, and uh, I. I definitely. I did get it. Well, I think it was cool, but. What was crazy was, and what I still think to this day Ten is... Ten points for Gryffindor. <laughs> what I still think to this day is, I was like, am I making a weird face? Do I have an underbite? Am I sweating? Does she like it? Is she faking it? Is she really into it? Am I bad? Is this the best two minutes of her life? And I don't know. And what I'm saying is just... Don't be selfish. It was a minute and a half. Let's be honest, guys. This segment is lasting longer than Vinny's first time oh, having yeah. sex. Oh, or ever, ever. Which is true. Um, but yo, be safe, be smart, you know, wear a condom, fall in love, and it's gonna be cool. I remember that more than any other time I've ever had. Thank you, All Time Low, for having me on Full Frontal. Thank you for requesting me. You guys are my friends. I'm from Montgomery, New York, and I'm on tour in Europe right now with Green Day, so I appreciate you guys as brothers and best friends. Thank you very much for having me on Full Frontal. Ah, darn it. 
What a man. What a You know what, Alex? He's a man with a million you stories. Know what, you know what we should do right now? What? We should throw to some of our best friends in Pierce the Veil. Oh. We have to listen to them, dude. We got to listen to their music. We are. We're running out of time, so we should play one more song, and then maybe when we come back, we'll talk about like a few little things, wrap up the show, whatever. I hope Nick's uh, listening. Yeah, we, we, these guys were on the festival tonight. Uh, it was nice to rendezvous with them because we just spent a lot of time in the States with them. Uh, it's Pierce the Veil, Bulls in the Bronx. Good golly, Miss Molly. We're back on full frontal, um, and we've we've had so much fun today. So much fun, dude. It's been it's we've def- I think we've topped last week. Yeah, it's gonna get better every and week. And by topped, I, think. I mean there's a good chance the FBI is about to raid my home. Fortunately, I'm in the Germany, bus. so they'll find nothing because yes. I bring all my incriminating evidence with me on the road in a suitcase. Uh, before we close out, I just I wanted to bring this one email up that I got from a girl named Vanessa, and I feel really bad. I'm, like, torn about this whole thing because she emailed us. It was the one, like, gnarly complaint email that we got last week. And right. she goes... But when you do send an email to us, you have to be aware that we might talk about it on air. You know? Yeah, you have to be prepared for I mean, you're, you're setting yourself up. Um, so Vanessa said, My mom follows you on Twitter to keep an eye on what my favorite band is up to to make sure you're not a bad influence. She knows what kind of band you guys are. <laughs> Ooh. And uh, since we watched Straight to DVD together, we had a massive... Row, when the full frontal promo picture was posted, you can easily guess why. Because we're naked. The fuck Wait, is a row? So your mom watched the DVD with you, but then was offended when we posted a picture that also was slightly exposing. Um, I, apparently, the mom didn't really want her to listen to the show, but the deal was if she could listen to the first ten minutes uh, and approve of it, things would be cool. Uh, apparently, within the first five minutes of the show. Uh, she has not only been banned from listening to our radio show, but she is not allowed to even go to our shows or listen to our music anymore. Damn! <laughs> so, I don't write about this stuff in my songs, Mom. Yeah. I hope this mom's listening again, and I hope she's made it through. You know what's fucked up about this? Is the daughter's not allowed to listen anymore, but the mom is upstairs like, oh, it's my favorite radio it's show my favorite ever. Show ever. <laughs> this is the best. You know what? We're not out here to fuck, your, to fuck up your life. We're out here to have a good time, to have you forget about your, your sorrows, and just have a good time and enjoy life, man. That's hey, why we're here. These things are out there. These perversions are out there in the world. Yeah. What we better- did not invent boners. We didn't invent penetration. We just embraced penetration. If you got a problem with boners, take it up with the man that invented them. And I don't know who that is. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I feel very bad for you, Vanessa. I love you so much. Um, I really hope that you do still get to come to our shows. And I really hope that this show doesn't uh, disable you from coming to our shows or listening to our music. Regardless, here at All Time Low, we pride ourselves on our live shows. We kind of we want you to come out and see us live and enjoy the show, enjoy your music. And we hope that this doesn't kind of impede this you This is from an doing extension that. of our show. This is an... It's an extension of my body, my, my sexual my sexual prowess, my sexual being, my my uh, my qui, my qui, and my qui right now is boiling over with rage at the fact that your mother will not let you listen to our show anymore. So, uh, Vanessa, I hope you get to tune in this week. I hope you get to tune in next week. Before we go, I want to pose one more question for next week's episode. Uh, as I said, we need you to email your questions, comments, concerns. Uh, pictures of, of birds eating fruits. Uh, the email address is fullfrontal, F-U-L-L-F-R-O-N-T-A-L, at adobe.com. Fullfrontal at adobe.com. Is the email? Yes. Send them there. Um, the question this week is, if you got a chance to come backstage at one of our shows, what's the first thing you would do? And this is without, like, without express... Like uh, you don't you don't have a backstage pass. You just you just made it backstage. You snuck back. What's the first thing you would do? Right. We want to know because uh, it fascinates us. Uh, this has been another episode of Full Frontal. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you so much. You guys can it's catch been... us. You guys, Woo! you guys can catch us every single Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And you know what? We gotta give a big shout out to our engineer Ryan Dawson. He's manning the Pro Tools. Oh, my God. Running the laptop. What would we do? I know nothing about technology. We got our producer, Jeff Maker, helping us take the stories. Mm, yeah. He's a guy. And you know what? We have Vinny Vegas, Brian O'Donohue. We got Danny Curley. Brian O'Donohue? He's, he's made it. 
We've made him... Wait, wait, no, no, this is great. We've made him more Irish than he could possibly be. He lives in Boston, so we he got must Vinny, be O'Donohue. We got Fuck Vinny you, Vegas. Kid. We got Brian Donahue. We got Danny Curley. We got everyone from our crew and a band. We got Zach Merrick. We got everyone listening to us. Thanks for listening. Massive shout out to the Simple Plan guys for coming out tonight. Thanks, Adobe, for having us. We fucking love you. From Germany, we love you very much. This is Full Frontal. I am Alex. I am Jack. And we will see you next week. Have fun.